Chop it down. Chop it down. Oh, <laughs> Well, if you have any idea what's happening here, I am building a swim bait and a crank bait. So on to the next step. <laughs> what's best? cut out so again it'll be a little three-piece bluegill looking thing and then a I don't know what three kind piece of, of fries three piece of fries is gonna be a three-piece here's the fry I don't know maybe I'll do a shad paint job on this little square bill next is gotta cut the joints for the jointed swim bait gotta chamfer the edges cut the little area for the square bill I gotta get them sanded down a bit So I rough sanded this guy. I'm gonna have to come through with normal sandpaper. This isn't small enough and I'm starting to take away parts that I don't need to, so I have to hand sand this down. It's the little square bill. Uh, time to do this uh, bluegill here. All right, I can't get too much further. I gotta come back and hand sand all this. We've got these rough, roughly shaped. All right, so. Next step for me is to cut the joints on this one. So the way I do it is actually take a clamp and clamp the angle, like I cut a board at 30 degrees and then I rest my saw on that angle and when I cut through it just constantly stays on that angle. Cuts down, you know, go all the way through, go, I don't know, almost like a quarter of the inch, quarter of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, just leave that amount uh, connected in the middle. You basically finish the entire bait and then at the very end you come through and cut that one. And then on this one, all I'll need to do is sand this little area to get it uh, to fit the stencil I made and then chamfer the edges and cut out a little square area right here for the square bill. Guess I'll get the hand sanded on this one. Done. Gonna transfer, chamfer the edges, and probably cut the square out. I don't know. I'll see what makes most sense. I need to cut a little slit right here and then chamfer the edges. So I'll be back. All right. Gonna start chamfering these edges here. All right, so I got the top chamfered here. I'm gonna come back with sandpaper and get it smoothed out on this side. And then, of course, do the same thing on the bottom and then cut the slit for the bill. I gotta run to the Home Depot to get some Lexipollen carbonate. But, uh, yeah. So now I'm just gonna round out the edges. Just take a piece of 
sandpaper, pliable, just rub it over it. Like Got a little crank uh, blank here. Gotta put the bill right here, maybe a little lower. Gotta go to Home Depot, like I said, and get some of that material. So, got this guy all finished up. All right, we are back on the bait project. So I went and got some Lexan polycarbonate. It's like five bucks. And uh, then got a vise, finally. So today I'm gonna be cutting out a big groove for the bill to slide in here and then also be cutting these joints out well right here I'm gonna cut this joint and then I need to cut this tail down on either side so Cut the other side of it. Chisel this out. Got that cut out now I'm gonna mark this it has to have a tapered outward angle so I'm gonna mark it on each side on say like this side and this side and then just do a constant angle out for the square bill so got a bill pattern here so I'm gonna come through with the jigsaw and cut this out real quick all right really rough shape I'm gonna come back and hit it on the sander to smooth it out Just with some glue, I'm gonna have to fill some of these. There's small gaps here, so I'll have to either fill them with wood glue or baking soda and super glue. Um, so the square bill is actually done for now. I'm gonna move on to this guy right here. I gotta cut right here and right here to thin out the tail, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Got these grooved out and cut out for the tail. Now I just gotta come through and chop right here to leave just the thin tail part. So I'm gonna come down right here and chop those. Woo! All right, got a thinner tail than the rest of the body. I'm gonna come through with the, with the chisel here and chisel off these nubbies. Got his little tail cut out. Obviously, I'll have to do the rest for the whole body, but he's gonna be a fat little bluegill. I'm gonna cut the joint now, right here and right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut halfway through this, or not halfway, but almost halfway. Uh, this is a 30 degree angle that I cut on a chop saw, and then just use the other side to keep it level so whenever you're cutting through you put this on top of it to keep it cutting through the same angle. Just a 
a little bit further. Oh, and we finally found out what this wood was. The said when we were cutting it, it smelled like whiskey. Uh, it's because it's oak, and they age whiskey in oak barrels. So I've got half of it done. I'm going to flip it over and do the other half here. So you can see I've cut through a portion of it. Not all the way through, but that's where one of the joints will be. And then the last joint will be on the tail here. I'm going to do a different joint than the little swim, that bass swim bait I did. So FedEx coming in hot. Amazon, we got FedEx, we got Amazon, we got them all. All right. And now you can see there's a what will be a joint once I get the chamfering done and the sanding and the cutting of the like these are gonna be little pectoral fins and I gotta get the dorsal fin and this fin um, cut down as well so this just makes it easier to do this last one I made I did this part after I had rounded it out and it made this part a lot more difficult so I think the next step for me is to cut out the fins I need this fin this fin sorry I'm gonna, like cut a line on either side like I did here to make a thin little spot for this fin and then and sand down this edge and this edge to round it off to have a you know, fish shaped profile. So. good enough right now for me for a rough shape uh, I gotta come back and hand sand majority of it and then again shave down this area right here and on the other side to make the top fin got a chunk out right here and right here to make the pectoral fins and then shave these down to make that back fin but uh, making good progress on it As you can see, this side is shaved down a bit, so I'm going to do the same thing over here, and this will be the protruding fin up here, and then same thing down here and right here. All right, then we'll just chip these away with the old chisel. In there. All right, we got a fat little bluegill. So I'll do some fine chisel work here to get it a little more dialed in, and then, like I said, it still may. It's pretty bulbous, so may sand the front down, and then I need to champ for the edges here, here, smooth out the tail. About done with the crankbait, I just need to sand down all of the uh, super glue and baking soda that I put in. And then that one's ready for a clear coat, or sorry, a, a paint job. So I think I'm going to do either a craw pattern on the crankbait or some sort of shad pattern. Not sure yet. I think a craw will be easier just with the stencil and spray paint again I'm trying to use. but. 
think I'm done for tonight. I will see y'all tomorrow. I'm gonna attempt to pour some lead in the old hole. Got it poured. I'll go uh, put it in water, see if we need more weight, but it's a good pour. Got the lead put in, put it in water. It sits pretty good, I like how it sits, so I'm gonna file this down a bit and then fill it with baking soda and super glue. And then once I have that filled in, I'm going to drill a hole, a hole, and a hole for the line tie and the two hook hangers. And then she's ready for paint, so get this uh, filed down here. Easy as that. Now I'm going to cover it in a pile of little baking soda and then drop few dots of super glue on there and it hardens up. It's a small pile of baking soda. A few drops of that. We'll let that harden up for a bit and then I'll come back with the, the file, file it down, and then I'll start drilling holes for the hardware. So the super glue is hardened, I'll go ahead and file it down. Alright, all smooth there. Drill a hole here, drill a hole here, and then drill a hole up here. Put the hardware in. And these are the pieces I've made. I just used this wire I found at, I think it's Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby. And then you just cut a strip about yay long, put it in the tip of your drill, and then hold on to one end and spool it up. So I'll go ahead and get these holes drilled out and I'll show you what the bait's gonna look like with the hardware in it. All right, back on the paint in here. So it's all cured, Oops. covered it in super glue. So like rock hard, I'm gonna put a base coat of white on right now. Also super glued in the hardware. Hang it up here to dry. So we'll let this bed boy dry. I was throwing this this weekend and I accidentally smashed it into a rock. So I got to uh, repair this real quick as well. I think I'm gonna give this one a craw pattern. So I gotta go to the store and get some yellow and some orange and some red or yellow and red. I don't know yet. And then I'm gonna make a template for the stripes. So I'll let these dry and we'll be back. All right, so the crate bait's over there drying, so I'm gonna have to work on the old, old fat blue gill. I gotta trim his face down a bit and trim these shoulders down a bit. So wherever there's black, I need to sand down a bit more. So well, that's what I'm gonna do. I like that shape better. I gotta figure out how to get these parts sanded down. Maybe if I start hand sanding, that'll help using the files. We'll start with that and see if it helps.
bringing me way back to the old days of being a kid, finding a stick, whittling something out of it. Well, I'll come back to you once I've sanded for an hour or so. That's uh, pretty boring, so. So that worked out pretty well, so I'm going to chamfer the edges now to make him a round here. Oh boy. Alright, so you get the gist of it, just rounding off the corners here. So I gotta do that on every corner, except for probably the tail, I might leave that alone, so get that done. So here's what it looks like when it's got half of it beveled versus half of it not. So I'm gonna round out these edges. The fastest way is for me is just to take a nice piece of Hardy's sandpaper and just go back and forth over it. Looks pretty good. Base coat's done. Like I said, I need to go get orange, red, yellow. I don't know. I gotta get crawl color, so. I'll see y'all once I have all the appropriate supplies. Alright, so I know I said I was probably gonna do a shad pattern, but I don't really wanna do that. I wanna do a crawl pattern. So, went to the store, got some orange paint, some red paint, and some black paint. I was just looking at a few crank crankbaits that I have and some are red, some are uh, have like a little fading effect so I'm going to paint the entire bait orange, that way I leave the belly orange and then I'm going to come back with red and transition from red to orange and then I'll do a black top right here and then of course we'll do like the little um, craw pattern that you see most crankbaits have so paint her all orange. Pretty solid, we'll let this dry. Hmm. This spray paint is doing something weird. Shoot. Well, maybe we'll be sanding this down again. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave this out to dry, I'll be back. All right, not sure what that was. It's like the spray paint I put on reacted with the base coat that I put on, so I'm just going to spray it straight orange and hope it doesn't react to the super glue. Definitely going to need two coats. Alright, no chemical reaction this time, so we'll let this dry. I'm going to come back and sand it down after it's dried and then put one more orange coat on and then we'll start with the fading pattern. Alright, put a little red on it. Gonna leave most of the top red and just a smidge of the belly. Orange. Orange belly, mostly red. Has a slight sunburst. Yeah, looks fine. We'll come back with some black and hit it right here on the top once this is dried. And then we'll get the pattern laid down. I'm right, gonna come through with some black here on the top of his back. And then I'll do a fade, slight fade into the body. And then we'll put the little crawl lines on it. So just taped it up so we could get this solid back. And obviously it doesn't have to be super accurate because again, like I said, I'm going to be fading down just a bit. Alright. A solid black dot there, or solid black line, so let this dry up and then we'll come back and fade it in. We got a solid black line up top, now we're going to start bringing it down just a bit. All right, looks
looks good to me. I'll let this dry up. So I got a little pattern cut out here. Since I don't have an airbrush, I have to rely on templates that I make to put down patterns and stuff. So cut up this little template. I'm gonna be using just glitter blast paint to uh, get these lines kind of ghosted on there, so. So pull the card off here, we'll see how it looks. Looks pretty cool. So we'll let that dry up and uh, we'll do the other side. Alright, we'll see how it turned out. It's hard to get it symmetrical. Alright, all done with the paint job here. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to uh, put some eyeballs on it and then cover it in epoxy. So, so